Imagine standing on a dark hill, miles away from a sleeping giant, and suddenly the night is torn open by a brilliant, primal glow. A mountain breathes fire. Rivers of incandescent molten rock begin to flow. A brilliant crimson and orange molten paths trace down its slopes. The air, once still and cool, now shifts. It carries the faint, sharp smell of sulfur and the deep, guttural rumble of the earth itself, speaking. This is a volcanic eruption, a spectacle of immense power, terrifying and beautiful. But it is more than just a light show. It is a profound story, a chapter in how planets are born, how they live, how they change over cosmic timescales. To understand a volcano, we must first speak its language. The two most important words in this language are magma, lava. Though they are often used interchangeably, they represent two distinct stages in a fascinating journey. It all begins deep within a planet, in a realm of immense heat and pressure. Here, solid rock, under the right conditions, can begin to melt. This subterranean molten cocktail of rock, superheated crystals, dissolved gases, is called magma. Magma is the unseen engine of the volcano, the restless heart beating deep within the Earth's crust and upper mantle. It is the source of all the drama to come. The heat that melts this rock comes from two main sources. Some of it is primordial heat, a leftover from the planet's violent formation billions of years ago. The rest is generated by the slow, steady decay of radioactive elements scattered throughout the rock, a process that releases energy over geological time. Because this molten magma is less dense, lighter than the solid rock surrounding it, it has a natural tendency to rise. It migrates upwards, seeking paths of least resistance through fractures and weaknesses in the planet's crust, slowly accumulating in underground chambers. The journey from magma to lava marks a dramatic transition from the hidden world to the visible one. When a magma chamber becomes overpressurized or when a pathway to the surface opens up, the molten rock is forced out. The moment this material breaches the surface and spills into the open air, we no longer call it magma, we call it lava. Lava is magma that has been exposed to the surface its dissolved gases bubbling out like the fizz from a newly opened bottle of soda. This is the fiery river we see, the stuff that builds new land and reshapes the world around it. The behavior of this newly birthed lava depends entirely on its composition, which was determined back when it was still magma. Its thickness or viscosity is a key factor. A thin, runny lava with few trapped gases will tend to flow gently and spread out over large areas, like spilled honey. In contrast, a thick, sticky lava rich in dissolved gases can be explosive. On Earth, the story of lava and magma has produced a stunning variety of geological structures. Volcanoes are not one size fits all. They are custom built by the specific type of eruption that forms them. The most massive are the shield volcanoes. These are gentle giants, broad and low-sloped, like a warrior's shield laid flat on the ground. They are built up layer by layer from countless flows of thin, fluid lava that can travel great distances before cooling. The Hawaiian Islands are a perfect example of this process. In stark contrast to the gentle shield, volcanoes are the stratovolcanoes, also known as composite volcanoes. These are the iconic, picture-perfect mountains we often imagine. Tall, steep, and majestic. Mount Fuji, Mount Rainier, Mount Vesuvius. They're constructed from alternating layers of thick, sticky lava flows and explosive deposits of ash, pumice, and rock fragments. Their steep, conical shape is a direct result of this explosive history and the viscous lava that doesn't flow far from the vent. A third, more humble type is the cinder cone. These are the simplest form of volcano, 
built from fragments ejected from a single vent. A volcanic eruption is a profound act of planetary recycling, a force of both awesome destruction and incredible creation. When lava flows from a vent, it embarks on a mission to build new worlds. As it pours across the landscape, it engulfs everything in its path. But upon cooling and hardening, it becomes new rock, new ground. The entire island of Hawaii, for instance, is made of volcanic rock that was once deep inside the earth. Volcanic ash, which can seem so destructive during an eruption, is incredibly rich in minerals. This mineral-rich ash enriches the soil, making the land around volcanoes some of the most fertile on the planet. And yet, we cannot ignore the immense destructive potential. Explosive eruptions can generate pyroclastic flows, superheated, fast-moving avalanches of ash, rock, gas that incinerate everything they touch. Ash fall from a large eruption can collapse roofs, disrupt air travel across continents, and, if massive enough, block out sunlight, leading to a temporary drop in global temperatures, a volcanic winter. In places like Iceland, People harness volcanic power using geothermal heat to generate electricity and warm their homes. Scientists are modern-day volcano watchers, using seismometers, GPS, and gas sensors to look for signs of an impending eruption. This science of prediction is not perfect, but it provides warnings that can save thousands of lives, allowing people to coexist with these powerful forces of nature. Volcanism is not a phenomenon unique to our home planet. It is a fundamental process of planetary evolution, and we see its signature scattered across our solar system. By looking outward, we gain a cosmic perspective that deepens our understanding of the forces at play. Each world with a volcanic history tells a different story, shaped by its size, its composition, and its unique cosmic circumstances. Our journey begins with our closest celestial companion, the Moon. Today, the Moon is a silent, geologically dead world. But it wasn't always this way. Its dark, smooth maria are vast, ancient plains of solidified lava. Huge volumes of very thin, runny basaltic lava flooded enormous impact basins billions of years ago. The moon's volcanism ceased because, being smaller, it lost internal heat more quickly. A planet's ability to sustain volcanism relates to retaining internal heat. Larger bodies, like Earth and Venus, outlast smaller ones. Mars, being intermediate in size, had a longer, more dramatic volcanic history than the moon, but it too has waned over billions of years. Exploring these worlds is like viewing planetary snapshots at different stages of life. We test ideas. How does lava flow in a near vacuum? How high can a volcano grow in lower gravity? What do dense atmospheres do to eruptions? This reveals which aspects of volcanism are universal and which are unique to Earth giving us a richer, more complete story of how rocky worlds work. As we venture outward to Mars, the red planet, we encounter volcanism on a scale that dwarfs anything on Earth. Mars is home to the largest volcano ever discovered in our solar system, Olympus Mons. This colossal shield volcano stands nearly 14 miles high, almost three times the height of Mount Everest, and its base is so wide it would cover the entire state of Arizona. This gargantuan size is possible for two main reasons. First, Mars's gravity is about 38% of Earth's, allowing taller mountains before collapse. Second, Mars lacks active plate tectonics. A stationary crust let one hotspot build in place for eons. Some evidence hints at geologically recent eruptions. We can't rule out future activity. Next, we journey to Venus, Earth's twin in size, but a world of extraordinary extremes. Shrouded in a dense carbon dioxide atmosphere, its surface is hot enough to melt lead. Radar, imaging peels back the clouds to reveal a world dominated by volcanism. Over 1,600 major volcanic features, vast plains, strange pancake domes, 
and intricate lava channels thousands of miles long. With atmospheric pressure over 90 times Earth's, explosive eruptions would be suppressed. Volcanism likely dominated by vast outflows. Fluctuating sulfur dioxide and thermal anomalies could be signs of activity today, placing Venus among living volcanic worlds. Our journey to the outer solar system brings us to one of the most bizarre and volcanically violent places imaginable. Io, one of Jupiter's four largest moons. From a distance, Io looks less like a moon and more like a moldy pizza, pockmarked with splotches of yellow, red, black, and white. These colors are the result of sulfur compounds spewed across its surface by relentless, ongoing volcanic activity. Io is, without a doubt, the most volcanically active body in the solar system. It is a world in a constant state of eruption, with hundreds of active volcanoes blasting plumes high into space. Io is far too small to have retained enough primordial or radiogenic heat. The answer lies in tidal heating. Io is caught in a powerful gravitational tug of war between Jupiter and its sibling moons. This constant push and pull flexes its interior, generating tremendous heat through friction, like a paperclip warming when bent back and forth. This keeps much of the mantle molten, creating a global subsurface ocean of magma that regularly erupts. Some plumes shoot sulfur and sulfur dioxide up to 300 miles into space, and its lava flows are among the hottest known. Io resurfaces itself every few million years, erasing impact scars. Io teaches us there is more than one way to power geology. At its heart, the science of volcanoes boils down to a simple, elegant story of heat and movement. The burner at the bottom represents a planet's heat source, its hot core, and the decay of radioactive elements in its mantle. As the soup at the bottom heats up, it rises. Cooler soup sinks. This circular motion is convection. This is precisely what happens inside Earth. Solid rock that over geologic time behaves like a very slow fluid. As mantle rises, pressure decreases, lowering the melting point and forming magma, especially at mid-ocean ridges. Where plates pull apart, magma feeds the seafloor's continuous renewal. Another way, add water. Subducting plates release water, lowering melting points, like salt melting ice, fueling the ring of fire. A planet's heat comes from accretionary leftovers and radiogenic decay. Unstable isotopes, uranium, thorium, potassium, release a steady stream of heat over billions of years. This replenishes the thermal budget and keeps the mantle moving. Heat must escape. Volcanoes are among the most efficient, dramatic exhaust pipes to the cold of space. They recycle materials, bringing essential elements and gases from deep interior to surface, replenishing atmospheres and nourishing life. Without it, a planet could become static and barren. Volcanism is a heartbeat of geologic life. From the fiery rivers of Kilauea to the frozen lava plains of the moon and the sulfurous plumes of Io, Volcanoes tell a universal story. They are a fundamental expression of how rocky worlds function. The architects of landscapes, the regulators of atmospheres, the conduits for the immense energy stored within a planet's core. They are forces of both destruction and creation, reminding us that the ground we stand on is part of a living, breathing system. Some scientists believe that life on Earth may have begun in places very much like volcanic environments, black smoker vents that spew superheated, chemical-rich water. In the deep dark, ecosystems thrive on chemical energy, not sunlight. As we learn, we predict better and protect communities. Our satellites, seismometers, and sensors extend our senses to hear Earth's whispers before it shouts. Volcanoes show a planet is not just a static ball of rock. It has a hot, beating heart. Each eruption offers a glimpse into a hidden, fiery world, reminders of primordial forces that forged and still shape our home. 
So the next time you see an image of a volcano, don't just see a mountain of fire. See a window into the soul of a world, inviting us to look deeper and wonder. I hope you like our stories of the skies. Until we meet again, I wish you a clear sky.